This video will review the definition of an integral. Okay, so let's say we have some function f of x, and this function is equal to the derivative of some other function, capital F of x. So in this case, if our function is the derivative of this other function, then what we would say is that f of x, or big F of x, is equal to the integral of f of x dx. So this is what we would call an indefinite integral. It doesn't have any uh, definite bounds for the upper and lower edges of the region here. In general, what you would have to do is include a constant of integration. You'd have to add plus c here because this f might be shifted up or down by some constant. But for our purposes, we're just going to assume that this constant of integration is equal to zero and move forward from there. Okay, so f of x, big F of x, our function is the integral of little f of x. And the value of our function big F at b minus its value uh, big F at a is equal to the integral from a to b of f of x integrated with respect to x. So this type of nomenclature would be what we, what we call a definite integral, the integral from a to b. All right, so what do these symbols and terms end up meaning for us? So the integral of f of x from a to b with respect to x would be equal to what we would call the area under the curve from a to b. So if we have some function f of x here, and maybe it goes up and then through 0 and down, and we have the value a defined here, x equals a, the value x equals b is over here, then we want to know what the area under the curve is uh, relative, uh, the area between the, the function and x equals 0 at any point in this function from a to b. So this area is also what you would call signed, so we S-I-G-N, so signed. So it's building up positively on this side uh, when the function is positive, and it's negative when the function is over here. So this is adding to the value of the integral, and this side is subtracting from the value of the integral. All right, so this seems like it might be a fairly complicated operation in general to get what the area under this curve is. So what we can do is we could say that this integral is approximately a sum from i equals 1 to n. So we're going to have n little regions here of the value of the function f of x i, so the value at some uh, point, times delta x, times the width of this region. So what we're doing here is we're approximating this integral, approximating this area under the curve as the area of a bunch of rectangles of this function. So the width of the rectangle would be delta x, some value we specify. And then the length of the rectangle would be the value of the function. You could use the value of the function at the beginning of the region, the end of the region. You could use some more complicated formula like trapezoids or anything, but it's the same basic concept. You're approximating this integral as some type of sum of the area of a bunch of geometric objects. Okay, so you know we might say delta x is b minus a divided by n, the width of the region divided by the number of rectangles we want. We might say x sub i is a plus the plus the rectangle number we're on times delta x. That would give us what we might call a left-hand rule, where the height of the rectangle is the value of the function at the left edge of the region. Okay, so we can actually define our integral in terms of these little rectangles, because we can say the integral is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity as the number of these little rectangles gets very, very big of the area of all of those rectangles. So you can imagine this is a fairly crude approximation when we only have a couple in when we only have a couple rectangles when their area is when their width is pretty big, because we're missing spots here. See so we're missing a little region up there, little region there, and those small errors, you know, they might add up. And then we have we're doing too much there, too much on that side, so 
Those errors can add up over a large region, especially when your function changes very fast. So the more rectangles I use, you can see I have much less error there because the, the regions that I'm missing are getting smaller. And as they get smaller and smaller, that error is going to eventually go to zero as these rectangles become infinitely thin, as they become the regions become infinitesimally small. Okay, so in the limit that we have an infinite number of rectangles, each of them is infinitely small, we have no error, and then the area of all those rectangles is equal to the area under the curve. So then in that limit, the area is equal to our, our integral. All right, so if we do something like the integral from 0 to 3 of x squared integrated with respect to x, the exact value, as we'll see in the next video, is equal to 9. So let's approximate that as some rectangles here. So we'll, we'll make a rectangle of width 1, and then we'll evaluate at the left-hand side at 0, 1, and 2. So that would be uh, f of 0 is 0, f of 1 is 1 squared is 1, f of 2, 2 squared is 4. Each of those rectangles has a width of 1, you know, 1 minus 0, 2 minus 1, 3 minus 2. 0 plus 1 plus 4 is 5, times 1 is 5. So if we approximate them with rectangles with 1, we get 5. That's a pretty poor approximation. If we approximate them with rectangles of width 1 half, we get these uh, six values for our function regions there. If you add up all those rectangles, you get a value of 6.88, which is better, but still not great. If you do re rectangles of width 1 fourth, then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then we have 12 rectangles there, and the area the area of those rectangles adds up to 7.91, so getting better. But if we keep doing this process all the way until we get into an infinitely small rectangle, you'll see that we do converge to that final area under the curve value of the integral from 0 to 3 of x squared being equal to 9.